struggling and a lot of farting around. The engine's now in the car. Uh, we've kind of hung it in the right place where we think it's right. We've also used this bit of wood just to align it where we want it. And also a jack underneath just to twist it up so the sump was more level. Um, it was pretty good, but it was just using a spirit level. It was just a little bit off, off uh, level. So, so we use that um, just to level the sump out, which is the key thing here. Don't use the intake as reference because the intake kind of slopes down as on a bit on the piss. So that's where a lot of people make mistakes with these. We've just uh, used a bit of wire um, to mock up the mount on this side and Duncan, uh, a friend of mine who does a lot of metal welding and fabricating, has just gone back to the shop where he's going to fab up that that um, engine mount for that side. While he's doing that I'm going to clear a bit of space over here so that we, we can get in there and just mock it up a, ni a bit nicer. And then what we're going to do is just tack weld that engine mount on that side in place. So down here and uh, that will allow us to then, then create the engine mount on the other side um, and we'll just go from there. Uh, in order to help him out I'm just going to be removing the steering arm, probably get rid of the uh, get rid of the, the um, power steering fluid reservoirs, actually we don't even need it because uh, the M57 uh, power steering pump has one built into it and uh, yeah it's going well, it's just a bit of a pain getting it in there. We will be removing it once again to weld all the engine mounts in properly and all that good stuff. Um, but we're going to wait out for that, then we're going to drag it outside and give it a good pressure wash off, clean up what needs to be cleaned up, and which won't, uh, as some certain stuff won't be easy to get to once we've put the engine back in. But as you can see in here, um, other than the atrocious mess, which is the wiring, uh, which actually is mostly working now and is mostly got rid of all the dangerous or horrible stuff, so that's actually not as bad as it looks. But in here, what we had to do as you'll be able to see here, is we cut a piece of the uh, bar off just to allow this to get in. Uh, this holds the, the tunnel in, and uh, just because of the position of this, we had to do it. It's probably going to be all right. I am obviously going to have to get a bit custom with it, but um, actually the operation's fine. Um, so we just cut that out. It's quite easy to just pop rivets in a new panel in there. So we'll, we'll deal with that at a later date. Yeah, there's the transfer box all sat um, in its house, all, it all looking quite nice in here and the, the gear lever is actually in quite a nice place, so I mean you, you just bend the gear stick to suit. So uh, yeah, stay tuned, it's going to be a bit of a long day on this but uh, we should get a fair amount done. I'm also stripped down the back so we can get in there and pressure wash everything nicely. When we wheel it out, I've also had to cut off uh, this side of the like kind of bump bumperettes kind of thing um, because they're all seized in the hole and just spinning I think that someone somehow got in there while the, while the body wasn't on and mounted them before they then bolted the body on so I'm gonna get my dad to drill those out while I remove the steering arm and uh, yeah sh should come together I put the rear bits of check plate back on these corners as you can just about to see although the lighting's not great uh, they're looking a lot lot better um, but yeah, a lot of work to do. A fair bit of touching up on the paintwork, and I really, really hate these um, these old hinges. So what I may look to do is uh, treat myself to some Optimil ones or something like that. Um, however, they are ridiculously expensive, so we'll see how the budget goes first.
see we've removed the engine once again from the car and it's sat in here on some wooden blocks uh, for the meantime. I've sadly run out of time this weekend as I've uh, got to head back to Exeter to uni. Um, but there's been a few positives that have come out this weekend. Uh, the engine fits in there nicely. Uh, we only had to modify the um, kind of seat, uh, the the cup, the tunnel where the the cover goes over the gearbox ever so slightly. So that other than that, then nothing else has had to be chopped away, and that's easily fixable. Um, the exhaust system. As you can see, when the engine was in the car, we slung it up underneath the car and actually, miraculously somehow, with Marcus Williams from NW Machines Adapt Front Adapter, it fits perfectly using a TD590 center box and, a, and silencer uh, rear section. So that's good. Um, in terms of what's next to do next, we've uh, got a lot of tidying up of mounts like this to do. Um, we've obviously stripped, as you can see, all of the checker plate off the car, it's looking a bit rough and ropey. Um, we've also stripped everything off the rear of the car um, and wire brushed up the rear cross member. We're going to wheel the car outside now and uh, give it a one final good big pressure wash and clean, get rid of any rust and then we're going to paint it, treat any rusty areas like the foot wells which need a bit of attention. Um, we're then going to properly weld in these are engine mounts, um, which you can see here, which I'll talk you through in a second. And then we'll paint it over in some chassis paint, Buzzline FX, all that good stuff and protect it for years to come. So, as you can see, here are my engine mounts, the M57, using the existing BMW mount. This hole was uh, a slight mistake um, by me, I have to say. So I'm going to fill that in with a bit of weld and then grind that flat again in a bit. Um, this slot just allows it to go in that bit easier, so you'll notice on this one we've just put the one hole, that's actually because we cut the breather off from this side and just tack what filled it in with weld, as it was just being a bit painful, it's hard to see where it's going to line up, and I'm not using them anyway. On this we've uh, counted for it as a bit of a guidance hole, um, but yeah, we, we did it wrong initially, so that's all cool. Here they are, I mean, don't, don't, don't judge me too much, but this is my first ever engine mounts for the car. Um, that I've ever made and first ever proper serious important job that I've ever welded up to be honest so step into the unknown but uh, yeah no they're really really sturdy even just tack welded in uh, and then when the engine sits in them they're nice and strong don't seem to move uh, I'm going to weld them in properly obviously as they're only tack welded all around here and then where we had to cut away the support for the uh, strut mount we're just going to triangulate that back in uh, into this piece with a bit of a steel just give it that strength um, yeah, other than that, I m may consider on this one um, just doing a bit of structural triangulation underneath the bottom, but actually, to be honest, I think they're going to be more than strong enough. If you saw the mounts that came off the existing car, uh, 200 TDI, they were tiny and nowhere near as strong as these in comparison, especially this one. This is, this is going to be holding a lot of the, lot of the load of the engine, and uh, that's a really strong, nice mount. So yeah, it's looking good. Um, had a big tidy up in here, uh, ready for the next weekend when I can crack on with it again.